Ace Ventura is one of those film characters that only works as well as he does due to the actor at his core, Jim Carrey. All right, that's it. Now it's my turn. Five minutes alone. That's all I need. Though it's impossible to imagine the franchise without him, the role was originally offered to Rick Moranis. It was also almost reworked to become the first Ernest feature film, and later a potential star vehicle for Whoopi Goldberg. After multiple passes from different actors, they then approached Jim Carrey, who was at the time one of the great ensemble players of In Living Color. You ever make the wrong turn and next thing you know you're in the hood? <laughs> and why do they call it hood? What is it like, the entire city's a giant sweatshirt and that's the part you pull over your head? What <laughs> is the deal? Upon signing on, Carrey helped rework the script to his comedic sensibilities, turning what could have easily been a mediocre comedy into a smash hit for the studio, cementing Jim Carrey as a movie star and launching a franchise as a sequel and animated series would soon follow. Alrighty then. While Carey continued cementing his legacy as a comedy megastar throughout the 90s, there came a point in the mid-2000s when he began to focus on more dramatic roles that distanced him from his earlier work. This resulted in studios trying to sequelize his earlier hits, without his involvement. Commencing with Dumb and Dumberer in 2003, the next few years saw several failed attempts to relaunch Jim Carrey franchises stupidly without Jim Carrey. Oh my god. My house is full of shit! He's shit everywhere! You would think the colossal failure of one of those projects, Evan Almighty, would put an end to these attempts once and for all. Even Tiger Woods shakes one from time to time, but the past is past. But just two years after Evan Almighty would come Ace Ventura, Pet Detective Jr. This film was the product of the sinister Warner premiere, a company I've covered before when I discussed A Christmas Story 2. Warner Premiere was a direct-to-video label of Warner Brothers, which specialized in producing low-budget prequels and sequels to popular Warner Brothers theatrical hits. And yes, in 2009, Ace Ventura Pet Detective Jr. was added to their stellar filmography. I know this movie had an awful reception upon its release, finally putting an end to the era of Jim Carrey-less sequels, which I guess were later proven to be not that much worse than actual Jim Carrey sequels. Uh -huh. But with Jim Carrey back to embracing more comedy roles, it seems that a proper third Ace Ventura film is finally in development, being written by the Sonic the Hedgehog screenwriters, with Carrey himself announcing via Instagram last month that he is, quote, more than ready for the next chapter. So with the next chapter ahead of us, I am more than ready to examine the forgotten chapter of the franchise, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective Jr. First things first, I know this movie was clearly made for kids, as it initially aired on Cartoon Network, which is such a baffling business decision that I don't even know where to begin. Cartoon Network is pleased to bring you the story of a man... Hungry fella? ...who just isn't right. <laughs> The Cartoon Network premiere of Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, premieres Monday at 11.30, only on Cartoon Network. The first Ace Ventura movie was released in 1994, and the sequel in 1995. While the movies and the cartoon were both popular enough amongst 90s kids, I find it hard to believe that kids in 2009 would have the same level of interest in the franchise, and on Cartoon Network no less. I just don't know who this movie was intended for. Regardless, as with other kids' movies I've talked about, I'm not going to really critique the performance of the kid actors. They're obviously doing what they can with a script that's just not very good. They really stepped in it. <laughs> okay, Ace, enough of this crap. Oh, <laughs> you say crap. <laughs> and for the record, the kid playing Ace Ventura, Josh Flitter, is actually doing his best with the material. You're welcome for solving the case, doing your job. Need me to wipe your butt for you? I just did! It's clear he had a reverence for the original movies, and he does manage to mimic elements of Carrie's performance. I smell panda poop. Excellent here. And speaking of kid actors, I should point out that the movie was helmed by David Mickey Evans, a man who directed and wrote one of the greatest kids' movies ever made, The Sandlot. How someone managed to perfectly understand kids and their perspective so well, only to later direct a movie like this, is just baffling. Two. 
At least Babe Ruth gets a paycheck again. Uh -huh. In this movie, Ace Ventura Jr. is trying to lead a normal life, but he continually finds himself drawn to solving missing animal cases, as well as some animalistic behavior. Ace Jr. didn't know his legendary father, as he disappeared when he was just a baby. His mother, Melissa, played by Anne Cusack, doesn't want him to follow in his father's footsteps, as it led Ace to his eventual disappearance over the Bermuda Triangle. This is not about your dad. We'll talk about him another time. Mom, you always say that. She is supposed to be the same character that Courtney Cox played in the first movie, though there's little to suggest this aside from her character name. Which again makes me ask, who was this movie for? This very easily could have been a standalone kids movie about a group of friends finding missing pets. I know the marketing makes it look like Ace Jr. is a little mini-replica of his dad, but he doesn't even don the Ace Ventura outfit and full persona until about an hour into the movie. The rest of the movie, he's just a normal kid with some quirky friends who solves mysteries. Owner is one Laura Wilson. Smart, funny, great listener, excellent personal hygiene. In tying this movie to the Ace Ventura franchise, it was only going to put off fans of the first two movies. I know from a marketing perspective, it kind of made sense, and they were hoping to attract fans of the first two, but again, were kids in 2009 really clamoring for a third Ace Ventura movie? That's it! You are not eating out of a dog bowl, you are not sticking your head out of a car window, and you're gonna use the toilet for something other than drinking! So Ace Jr. starts going through his version of puberty, which involves some primal behavior and a sudden change in hairstyle. Oh my god. What? It's happening. What is it? But then Melissa gets framed for stealing a baby panda from the zoo she works at, and she has to call in a favor from Grandpa Ventura. <laughs> Hello, Ace. Grandpa? Because this movie clearly needed more Ace Ventura knockoffs. What was my dad like? <laughs> What did your mom tell you about him? <laughs> well, Grandpa, just that once he got naked and had to free himself from a giant animatronic rhinoceros. <laughs> Part of the charm of the original Ace Ventura movies is not really knowing why he is the way that he is, or where he came from. So of course this movie needs to unnecessarily explain that away. Have you ever wondered why you keep looking for lost animals? Because... I don't know. Because you're a Ventura! It seems that the pet detective Gene has been in the Ventura family for centuries, which for some reason also causes that signature Ace hairstyle. Grandpa shows Ace Jr. other members of the family tree, though they obviously didn't have the likeness to show Jim Carrey, as there's not a single flashback or photo of him in this movie. In fact, the only picture of him shown, you can't even see his face. <laughs> Eventually, the kids decide to hunt for clues at Jurassic Park which is actually the Jurassic Park area at Universal Orlando, doubling as a history museum. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it, and packaged it, and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now you're selling it. You want to sell it. Though, oddly enough, the movie later has a scene that intentionally takes place at Universal Orlando, with the climax of the movie happening at the actual theme park. When Ace fails to find the necessary clues to free his mom before her bail hearing, Grandpa Exposition finally helps him embrace his true identity. You can start by being who you are. Who you were born to be. Holy testicle Tuesday! From here, the movie takes on an entirely different tone. You're a pet. Detective. Apparently the words, Pet Detective, unlock something deep in Ace Jr., as the rest of the movie is filled with many Carryisms, as he becomes a true little version of his father. Look, I am! I'll take a few of these for the road. Two percent next time. Again, Josh Flitter is trying here and doing his best to mimic the real Ace Ventura. It's just Ace Ventura is a character that is entirely dependent upon the physicality and delivery of Jim Carrey. Because of that, anything else just feels like a cheap imitation. Do not go in there! Woo! Yikes! 
mixed with movie tropes that we've all seen so many times. Non-telegenic endangered organisms. In English, Mr. Spock. The movie wraps up when Ace finally proves his mom's innocence, and they both learn to embrace him being a Ventura. I am so proud of you, Ace. Ventura! Thank you, honey. I love you too, Mom. All righty then. What the? One, the mom didn't even say I love you. So proud of you, Ace. Ventura! Thank you, honey. I love you too, Mom. Two, was this shot even an actual take? Why is he looking right at the camera? Is that grandpa's arm around him? Why is this the final shot? Honestly, the whole movie would have made a lot more sense if it had been young Ace Ventura rather than his son. At least then we wouldn't have to get all this forced backstory about the legacy of being a Ventura. You'll never be like everyone else because you're one in a million. Just like your ancestors. Just like your father. Regardless of your thoughts on Jim Carrey as a performer, you have to agree that he truly inhabits the Ace Ventura role. Do I have something in my teeth? To attempt to continue the Ace Ventura franchise of all franchises without Jim Carrey just proves how out of touch these studio heads can be sometimes. I honestly don't know what to expect from the upcoming Ace Ventura film. There are rumors that the new movie will revolve around Ace's son again, though he's now an adult. But if this movie taught us anything, it's that people really don't want to see someone else playing Ace Ventura. Ace Ventura is just synonymous with Jim Carrey. And if you doubt that, then just check out Ace Ventura, Pet Detective Jr. Alrighty then.